I'm Anthony Valeri, Director of Investment Management in Wealth and Fiduciary Services. The yield curve remains inverted with short-term bonds offering higher yields than intermediate or longer-term bonds. Many investors remain focused on short-term bonds and not giving a second thought to other segments of the bond market. After all, why would you buy an intermediate bond when short-term bonds offer higher yields? But is that the right investment strategy? What does history have to say about that approach? Today, we'll examine the track record of intermediate bonds relative to short-term bonds in an inverted yield curve. Spoiler alert, short-term bonds may not be the easy slam dunk you think they are. Let's start by taking a look at the Treasury yield curve. This is the yield curve which plots the yield for a given maturity over time. Normally, the yield curve is upward sloping, meaning that as the longer the maturity, the greater the yield to compensate for interest rate risk. And this is exactly what occurred uh, just over a year ago in May of 2022. But the yield curve inverted last year and at the end of May 2023 remain inverted in the aftermath of steady and aggressive Federal Reserve interest rate hikes. Again, note how much higher short-term bonds yields are compared to intermediate and longer-term bonds. With short-term interest rates above 5% for the first time in 15 years, T-bills and other short securities are getting a lot of attention. But is that the right investment decision? We went back to 1976 and looked at each month the yield curve was inverted and whether short-term or intermediate bonds outperformed over the subsequent one year. We used the 10-year and three-month T-bill to evaluate the yield curve back to 1982 and prior to 1982 used the two-year treasury as a proxy for the short-term yield in place of the three-month T-bill due to its longer history. From 1976 through today, the return differential between short-term bonds, as measured by the Bloomberg one to three-year government credit index, and intermediate bonds, as measured by the Bloomberg Treasury index, is a mere one-tenth of a percent loss, on average, for owning intermediate bonds rather than simply staying short-term. The percentage of success is almost a coin flip with a 42% positive batting average. Not a great average if you're an intermediate-term bond investor. However, if you remove the late 1970s, the results skew in favor of intermediate bonds, as you see on the right-hand side. Intermediate bonds, on average, since 1981, outperformed by a notable margin, by 1.7 percentage points, with positive outcomes two-thirds of the time. This may seem counterintuitive, given that intermediate bonds offer a lower yield. Well, the driving force behind the outperformance of intermediate bonds has been the onset of recession. An inverted yield curve is one of the most reliable recession indicators. You can see here when the 10-year treasury yield yields less than the two-year, creating a negative spread, and it's usually happened in advance of a recession as denoted by the gray bars. Once the recession arrives, the Federal Reserve usually cuts interest rates. Investors who locked in higher yields by buying intermediate bonds benefit as their bonds are often worth more. Short-term bond investors, on the other hand, in that scenario, are forced to reinvest at lower and lower interest rates and unable to keep pace with the price gains on intermediate bonds. The outperformance of intermediate bonds has become more pronounced in recent decades. Since the launch of the three to six month T-bill total return index, intermediate bonds have demonstrated strong outperformance with a high success rate since 1989. Of course, it's not a perfect 100% success rate, so keep that in mind. If we're in a repeat of the 1970s, stubborn inflation and a more aggressive Fed, then short-term bonds might be a better alternative in today's environment. However, we do not think we are in a repeat of the 1970s. And keep in mind that Treasury yields have been on the rise for close to three years, so we're well along the journey to a higher interest rate environment. But if history is any guide and you believe inflation will moderate, then an allocation to intermediate bonds makes sense here. And since the three-month yield exceeded the 10-year starting October of last year, Intermediate bonds, as measured by the Treasury Index, has outperformed the three to six month T-bill index by just over one percentage point through the end of May. I'm Anthony Valeri. Thanks for joining. We'll speak to you again soon.